All right, guys, welcome back. I'm going to do a quick demo for you here. And um, I want to show you sort of step one. We did a demo before where we talked about how to create a silhouette shape. I have something that I created here really quick. There's a couple issues with it, but I can adjust it a little bit later. I The, the back leg right here is a little out of perspective. So I, you know what, maybe I'll just go in here really quick and I'll adjust that super fast. Um, I noticed that after looking at it, that it was a little bit more, uh, it's a little too large. So I'm just going to transform it. Okay. Scale it down a little bit, get it to overlap a little bit. Actually, I'm going to get it to there. I'm going to copy that, delete it, paste it, and then bring it down underneath right here. Okay. Hold on a minute. I'll show you what I'm doing here. Um, I'm going to come up here, select all the negative space around here and delete. There we go. That should be good. All right. And then I'm going to hit paste and I have that leg. I'm going to drop it underneath this way. Now I can bring that leg and position it where I'd like it. Like I said, it was a little too large. So I'm just going to adjust it a little bit more and get it back in here like this. Maybe have it come about right let's say right about there or so. Okay. And it's on a separate layer so I can make some quick adjustments and take out this white that's right in there. Just delete some of that right there. That's it. Oops, not that. Okay, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and commit to this. All right, there it's uh, all one layer now. Okay. And let me just take my, my go over this little part right in here. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I want to come in here and basically start figuring out how to turn the side of the vehicle. One thing that I hate is I, I personally, this personal preference, I don't like working with a totally white page in the back. So the, one of the first things I'm going to do now that my silhouette's ready to sort of paint on top of, I'm going to pretend my light's coming from left to right. I want to put something else besides a white page on there. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to select this white page right here on a separate layer, command all, right? Now you'll notice when I pasted this in here, I still have some white on this leg, so I'm going to take my wand right now and select that white area. I'm just going to delete it out. There it goes. Delete it. There it's gone. And double check if you notice, if you zoom into your character or your silhouette that you might have. Look, I have some other white areas here that I didn't want inside my piece. So I'm going to go along here and select those. And there's a reason for that. Working on tone paper is a lot easier um, on the eyes, and it's easier to see sort of shapes when you're working with rough tone. So now that I have that done, what I can do is just to make sure I can go to levels, I can suck out all the value out of this, make it completely black, which it is. Now I'm going to come back down here and I'm going to select all on this. And I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to give it like a base, maybe like a warm gray. Just, I don't know, something about like right here. Okay. So I'm right next to the grays with the red there selected. And, and then I'm just going to go to bucket and I'm just going to touch and then I filled it right there. And again, I can come back here and see any overspray now. So look, if you see, I can take my eraser. I have a couple little spots in there that I can adjust still. And you can just zoom in really fast with your, your wand in here. Select, delete, delete. That's the great thing about having also a little bit of a tone um, image on the back there. It allows you to see all your mistakes it might be up in front. Okay, so basically there I go. I have enough right there where I can jump in here and I can start painting. So step one, I want to, looking at my guy here, I want to assign some value to him to get his shapes and his facades to start to turn to make him look like he's realistic. So there's a couple ways I could do that. Okay, one way is sort of a painterly method, which is a way that I sort of grew up with. Um, something I learned back in the day of using watercolor and oil paints is I can take a brush right now, I can come over here and I can swab some variations and values like a light gray like this. I could come into like 20% and I could basically almost like sort of scribble on top of my guy and indicate where there might be facade changes. So I can just, by using the adjustments of my brush, I can paint in and imagine a big metal plane here. Maybe there's a smaller knee joint here. Maybe there's a metal small metal tip there, something smaller right in here, maybe there's something larger there, and I just basically going to come along this guy and start scribbling in where I might want to paint him, okay? Now, this is just a rough sort of approach. A lot of artists like to work like this. There's nothing wrong with this, okay? But while doing this, I can also speed up my paint process 
by selecting part of my guy very quickly if I like, and then just painting inside my selection. So that's another option that I could do. So let me Command Z. Let me go back there really quick. Okay. Now I painted on top of him. Let me Command Z and take off whatever paint that I can. There we got him back. Here I'm going to go back to levels and let's suck out any white out of them. Let's make it completely black again. All right. So one is I can go in. I can start painting. Okay. Another option is is I can go in like this and I could just take my lasso, my free lasso like this, and I could just start selecting around part of him that I imagine being um, hit with light, like this little facade, maybe part of this is hit, maybe part of that, maybe a little section in here, uh, maybe there's a lower little section right in here, maybe there's something that comes in like right there, right here, and I'm just holding down the shift key now, and I'm going al along selecting different facades, might be on top of my guy here, like so. And I have a couple options on what I can do now. Now that I have those selections done right, what are some of my options? I can paint on the same layer if I like, option number one. All right. I can, I can just fill it and then blend it in, which is another option. Okay. Does that make sense? Where if I just were to fill it with white right now? So watch, if I came over here, um, I have that this white selected right there. I'm on another layer. I can just go under edit. I can go to fill and anything selected now is going to fill with that color. And then I could go in and blend that in. Now since this is on another layer, I can also adjust my opacity setting, right? See, and I can get my grays to blend in accordingly like so. So that's one option I have. Okay, let me hit Command Z. Let's say that I don't want to do that, but I want to use my selection there. I can take my brush hit control H, which is pretty cool, because now it hid my ants, my outline. And then I could take my brush and start off at like a 20% opacity. And I could just come in here and see and just start painting along the top of it. And where it hits, and I'm pushing a little bit more on my brush by adjusting, I'm also adjusting the opacity, I can start to get a feel of how that light might start to reflect and bounce off and what how I might start changing forms on my mech. You see how I'm doing that really quick here? So I'm just sort of painting it on. So that's another option that I could do is with selection, all right? Um, another option, I'll hit Control H, I get my ants back there, okay? So I could just continue to come in here and paste if I like. Another option that I could have done is if I go back to the main layer, I could just select what's right there and I could go to levels and I could just go like this and hold on a minute. Hold on a second. Let me make sure. Why is it not selecting? Let's go back here. Let's go to levels again. And there it goes. And I could lightly make some adjustments on the key level as well. Okay, it's up to you on how you want to work. So if I do want to do levels, let's say I want to lighten them up a little bit like this. Now I'm committed. I made those changes on, on the, the original silhouette. So it's up to you. There's personal preferences here involved. I like to work on top of the silhouette for a little bit. And then when I get something that I'm liking, I merge it all together. So I like to keep silhouettes separate. So I personally like to do it the other way, where I have a separate layer that's up on top like this. I like to hide the ants, and then I could come along, and I could just sort of paint, because then I could make my brush smaller. And immediately, if I want to put a little highlight on an edge, I could just come in here and just sort of go across like that. You see that? And now I have a little highlight there that's turning. I hit Control D. I've deselected, right? And now I can come back over here, and I could select like a secondary facade that might be right over here. Okay, so let's say I selected that guy. Let's say there's a little bit, oops, I didn't hit shift. Let's say I have a little bit of a curve that's right in here. Let's say I want to select this. Let's get this in here. I might have something that comes up in here. I might have, oops, didn't mean to do that. I might have something that's in here like so. And now I have uh, a couple other shapes that are starting to develop in here. Okay, and let's say I have that, I hit Control H, I'm on a separate layer. I can go to my brush now, and I can actually, this time I'm going to go a little bit darker, okay? And then now I could come over here with my brush, and I could just sort of paint across and see what starts to develop. I can go really light, like a 10% here, and see if this starts to get my shapes to turn, and I get anything else that feels pretty cool in here. This is sort of a neat approach. I like it how you can't see it. And then you could see 
parts of your, your guy start to come alive a little bit. So do you see that? Now how it's getting a little bit lighter in there? I'm turning some, I have some more highlights here. I have some darker areas here. And I'm just sort of going across this really lightly getting things to pop. Okay, so that's that's one approach right there, right? Let me show you another approach you could do. Okay, this is the way I like to work because I like to just select it, lasso paint on top of it. And then what I can do is I could blend. And what I mean by blend, this is on a separate layer right now, my highlights, right? So by blending, I could come over here, take black, go down to like 10% by hitting the one on my keyboard. And then I could come across this. And if I paint really lightly, make sure you hit deselect, by the way. I can start to paint this and see that I'm knocking this back a little bit more. You see how I'm blending that in there a little bit? And I can come in here hitting from one to zero on my keyboard and I could start to blend in some of these facade changes, getting other areas to pop out and uh, basically to push and pull my values. So I mentioned that before, pushing and pulling values. What is happening when I'm, when I'm pushing something downward and I don't want, don't want it to pop forward, I'm putting black on it. Right? When I'm pulling something forward, I'm adding more white. So if I want to get this to pop out right here, I need to come over here. I might be able to swab that gray really quick, and I might be able to come over here with like 10%. And I could come over and start painting a little bit more value up on the top here. And then I can make this little round area start to pop out. You see how that's popping now? It's starting to look like there's a surface change there and there's a little bit of a highlight coming across, okay? And then if I really want to, I like to save my highlights more towards the end, but if I want to now, I could come in here really lightly and I could just sort of say, hey, maybe I have a little bit of a highlight here. The reason why it's good to sort of wait on the highlights is a lot of you guys are beginners and you'll tend to get what I call sort of highlight crazy. And when you get highlight crazy, you start putting on too many highlights in the wrong place and then your, your design starts to sort of disintegrate and fall apart a little bit. Okay, so this is a great part of the design process is as I'm painting in here and adding little elements, I'm actually creating new little, little curves and organic elements and flows to the body. Do you see how I get a flow in here that's happening? Okay, so when I'm looking at this in the value, I have a definitive surface that's on top. There's a surface change that's in here, so I can blacken this out a little bit more. I am constantly have one hand on the keyboard and I'm adjusting my brush and I'm adjusting the values that I'm painting with, okay? All right, so that's one approach. Here's another approach you can do. It's sort of the process of subtraction, ready? I already have this value underneath here. It's the whole silhouette, you see that? And this is what I've painted on top so far. If I take the whole value right now of this, if I right click on it, I duplicate the layer, hit okay. I'm gonna, that's up above now, right? I turned off the highlights. If I go to levels, I can suck out all the black out of there by moving it over and now I have a white highlight. You see that? And now that I have a white highlight, I can work in the negative going backwards where I can start erasing part of it and I can start getting highlights that appear on my guy. Okay, so watch what happens when I do this. If I drop the opacity down a little bit like this, okay, I have a sort of like a light gray right there. Now watch what happens if I come in with my eraser and like 50%, I still have the black that's underneath there. So the more that I erase and start to work like this, I can quickly come in and just be selecting the shadow sides to my guy. And I know it looks a little time consuming, but it's actually can be a productive way to develop some quick ideation and ideas for to make my brush a little bit smaller. I might stroke across here a little bit, make some little gadget controls there. Okay, bear with me for a couple minutes. Then I can break my brush larger, go to maybe like 30%, take off this whole little area right here. Maybe I'm just gonna go across here a little bit, take a little bit off there, come back in here take some shadows off there, so on. So this is another option, another way to work. And what I'm doing is I'm subtracting. But the benefit of this can be is that since it's on another layer, if I really dim it down a little bit like so, and then I have the other one on underneath, I'm basically creating a structure of highlights that are on above it. You see that? Even though it's, it's much layered down. Now watch, let's say I don't want any of this that's in the middle here. 
I can actually come in here really quickly. So this is what I like about this method is I do this sometimes to get highlights to pop out where I want them to be. So I just take a brush, I go into real light, like 10%, and I just come in and I start erasing large, small, big areas. I'm hitting buttons as I'm working here, 20, 30, 40, getting the feet in here. And so do you see that really quickly with just a couple strokes? I automatically got some tone on my guy. And you see how it starts to turn him a little bit? It starts to give him a little bit more, some, three, uh, some basic three-dimensionality with light. My light is coming from left to right. So what I did just there in just a couple minutes, I now have this. See that? So before, when I started penciling on him, I spent five minutes and I got that. Now I have this. So see how quickly I've started to develop them, okay, on separate layers. And if I, if I were to take these and just turn them off, look at the difference. I just had a black silhouette. So just by coming in here really quickly and doing those sort of two techniques, I really start to define some of that shape. And then I could come in here and keep painting on top of this, develop it a little bit more. Now, remember in the, the last exercises we talked about painting textures, okay? Um, this is something where you can do, this has to deal with rendering and understanding light hitting surfaces and surface change. If I wanted to paint a really nice metal, what I could do right now is I could take a, you know, that uh, a part of his body or a sample shape of his head and I could go over like I did before and I could texture paint out metal really quick. I could put it on top and get it to blend in there and start working from there. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so we already did that assignment where we just did the square tabs of textures. I could do that right up here above right now. I could create something in metal, the texture on it, and I could take it, bend it, and I could throw it right up on the top of the surface. I could merge it into what I have, and then I could keep painting on top of that. Okay. Again, the key thing you want to do when you start working with this is really nail down the light source. Okay. Does everyone understand that? Nail down the light source. So what I mean about nailing down the light source, light is coming left to right, okay, or right to left, whatever it is you do. If you, if you have light highlights everywhere and you don't pick a light side and a dark side, there's going to be a massive problem. What's that massive problem going to be? Your, your object isn't going to look real because it's not going to have any, any facet changes on it that match the lighting. It's going to be all over the place, okay? So I always work light coming left, shadows going to the right, and then I can continue forward with this, okay? All right, so I'm going to pause here for a minute. I'm also going to fix that foot. That foot's driving me nuts right there. I'll adjust it. It's all crooked off the ground plane. I'll fix that, and I'm going to come in, uh, pause the video, and I'll paint a little bit more, and I'll show you the difference of what I've done. Okay? Okay, I was going to paint, but I just thought I'd put the recorder on, and I'm just going to work and not talk too much. But um, basically what I want to do right now is I'm just going to come in here with a brush, and I'm going to start just moving values around to find out to get a shape that I like and it's something that starts to make sense. So I'm just going to work from there. Okay, I'm going to work off of uh, a couple of the layers that I've already built here. Okay. And I'm just going to keep going from here and see what I end up with. All right. Oops. 
I'm going to try to stay rough in here. I don't want to get too much detail. I can come back later and adjust some things. One of the things I do do when I do this is I'm looking for some of the biggest angles happening in the body. So right now, look at that. I have a huge line. It's just the same principles when you look at shape and form analysis and you're wrapping lines around an object to make it look three-dimensional. I want to find the biggest lines in here. And right now, some of those lines are wrapping down this way. So I want to see if I could come in here and put a line that goes down that wraps over. And then I could come back a little bit later and figure out what's working on that shape versus what's not working, okay? I don't know, I, a friend of mine calls it noodling. You just get in here and you just sort of noodle out shapes and figure out what is what's working for you what's not that's actually a cool shape there it's coming in here and then it sort of wraps up this way so i can put another little bit of a drop shadow in there and get that to pop out a little bit more Now, I like what I'm developing right here, but I'm getting multiple layers here, so I, I want to commit. So what I did is I just merged all those down together. One of my concerns is how these, I like what's happening up here right now for just roughing this out, but then I'm trying to figure out how are the legs going to connect, and something isn't quite working in the perspective, where if this, this doesn't look like the front leg anymore, that looks like a front leg with those and those there. So I might erase some of this and see what, what happens. Uh, one of my thoughts was to come in here and take part of this shape right in here right now. And I'm just going to take the move tool and I might move them back a little bit more like that. So it's just sort of curious. Look at that. Doesn't that feel more centered there? A little bit more grounded because that feels like a center line between these two legs. This leg still feels off. And I think that's probably because of the highlight. That leg needs to drop backwards. So um, let me command Z. There is my head. I want to move them maybe down. I don't know. Maybe about right there for right now. I'm going to deselect, and then I want this leg to, it's pulling forward because of the highlight. You see that? So I want to push it backwards. So I'm going to do that right now by overlapping it like so. And then I'm going to come in here and really sort of tone it down and try to get this leg to come forward more, a little bit more. I want that to match up so it has another leg. And again, this is where sometimes your silhouettes overlap each other and you have to get in there and make them work you know um so one two three this is this is where i should have drawn this correctly 
really fast in my comp, but you know we're just doing really quick uh, studies here, which is fine. So I'm going to take this leg and move it up here, transform it, make it a little bit larger, like so, about there. There. Now that makes a lot more sense to me. Because see, now it feels like one large leg, one large leg, two small back legs, two small back legs. And I actually like the front leg being a little closer. So now I'm going to take this back leg here and see if I can't just move that a little bit more back like that so it matches that same sort of stance. And that's pretty cool. I feel like that's working now. I have um, what I call more of a center line that if I bring a center line down the center of this guy, it connects to even right here. Okay. So that was just a couple little adjustments there. Um, and now I'll, I'll keep going on drawing on top of him and just pulling and pushing and pulling shapes out. Okay. And then, and then what I like to do, which I think is important, is commit. When you get to something that you like, you want to come back and commit to it. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted here is I want, see how there's this big center plate here? I feel like there should be a center plate here. So what I'm going to do to save myself some time is just come in here and select this right here. I'm just going to copy that and paste that. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. Here we go. Copy, paste, and I can just actually bring this down right in here. I'm going to trans see if I can transform it a little bit. And maybe I can get that to act as a, some type of a center plate right about there between the legs. Okay. Now I'm going to dull it down a little bit to blend it in a little bit more like so. And then I could come in with my eraser. And I could erase a little bit. So erase at about 80% here. I'm going to go over sort of the middle. There, now I have sort of a center plate that comes between the legs there. And it's something that I stole from the eye. That's uh, from the front. And that's actually a, re a really great technique you can do. Um, some people do it with photos. I like to do it off of something that I painted. I painted this really rough up here. So now what I can do is, you see this little layer right here? This is just a great, check this out. I can duplicate that now. I could bring that up here, okay? And look, I can adjust the opacity to full sort of percent. Watch. Now I'm going to take this, I'm going to turn it like so. And see how that can now be a little wing that goes on the back there? Okay, and then I could paint that in and I can blend that in. So I just got that in there right now. Watch, I'm going to hit erase. Take a little bit off of the top of this thing right in here. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll come back and paint that in in a minute. Now watch, now I'm going to even do it again. This time I'm going to distort it. So look, I duplicated that layer, all right? And what if I turn it this way? This is the crazy thing about transform. And I go like this, and then I stretch it. See how I just created that shape? Look at how awesome that little shape is. You see how that could fit in? Actually, check it out. Look at that. See how it fit right there on the leg really quick? I took that shape I already painted on the face, and I've just moved it. I'm going to transform it. Boom. It feels like a real little protective shield in there. I got something I would have never have thought of. It's part of what I call a happy creation. It, I remember back in the days when artists would watercolor. They would sometimes spill watercolor on their paper, and they'd be really upset. Then you'd look at it. It was what we call a happy accident, where you're like, wow, that really works. So look at that little plate I just put on my leg right there. I turn that on and off, put it on top of my other, see how well that works? And now that I have that as one layer, watch, I'm going to duplicate that, right? I'm going to bring it over here. Now, I'm going to transform it. I'm going to tell it to flip, flip horizontally, okay? And see, I'm going to get it to go right about, but I'm going to have to adjust the lighting to get it to fix, right? And look, let's say I put it right about there. Aha! It works, right? There's another little leg piece there. So now, again, commit. I don't want to have 35 million layers, right? No. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to dull this side down a little bit. Why? Why would I dull that down, anybody? It's on the shadow side. All right, that's going to be my highlight side. Light's coming left to right. Shadow side. So I'm going to select all my layers now, merge them together. Look, one guy. Okay? And now I'm going to keep going on top of that, and I'm going to keep painting. So watch. Let me zoom in. Let me work on this leg right here because I really like the way this leg is, and I'll start working on something back here a little bit. Okay, so, um, and I'm not far into this, right? I'm like maybe 15 minutes into this. So do you see how with speed and time in an hour, I can have like a fully developed mech already that I've painted from just a silhouette study that I created? Okay, so now I'm going to get in here, 
And I'm just going to take some of this and I'm going to start painting just some little, like, look, I have a black. This sort of fades down, so I'm imagining, hey, maybe there's a little hydraulic hose or something that comes in here. Maybe it drops. Maybe I need to have, um, maybe I need to block, flatten this down a little bit more since this leg's in the back. I can deal with that a little bit later. I can always copy and paste something on top of it. Let me get a little bit of that gray sort of breathing through here. And then take some of this, bring this value back down, bring that across. Okay, get this to pop. What if this comes lightly? What if there's a little section here? It's like this. So it might go across here. That might come down, drop down here. There might be some little gizmo box, whatever, there. I'm just trying to push, pull values, right? Get things to pop, push them down, pull them forward, keep. Again, if you get tired of painting, use the lasso. Come in, take your lasso, select a little area like that. There's a little knee pad there, right? Go to brush. That way you can paint a crisp highlight on the edge if you like. Then you can fade it in. See that? I hit deselect. Boom. I painted a little knee there. Okay, so I can keep going on this guy. Now I can keep looking at his shape, his form. Look, I have some excess white in here I don't like. I'm going to take my brush, erase that. Those are some specifics that I can deal with later when I'm really finalizing my character. Or my paint, I should say. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to keep defining. Light's going to come down here. It's going to bounce back. I'm going to have some reflective light on the back of this leg here, right? So I'm going to be able to see how some of this is linked together. Now here's something that you can do. I do this quite a bit. I put a layer on top and I stick to a higher value. Right now I'm at 100% opacity with this gray and watch what I'm going to do. I'm just going to come across here and pretend there's like little bits here. I'm going to try to make something there and then something small here. I'll adjust my brush size. Maybe add a little detail or two here. You see this? I'm going to bring that across like that. Make this maybe it's a joint that connects here. Something there. Now see how I did that really quick? Now it's on a separate layer. Here's the best part. Opacity. Watch. There, see how I dropped it down? And it's much lighter and it fades back there. Since it's on another layer, I can also erase it, right? So if I turn it off and on, see, I just added what I call a little bit of reflective light bouncing back under that leg, which gets that to pop right there. And it really starts to pop. So now I could come over here and go, hey, that's cool. I like it. I'm going to leave it alone. I can also duplicate that layer, right? Yes. Use Photoshop to your advantage. I can take that layer right now. I'm going to move that over here. I don't even have to flip it all the way. I'm just going to turn it. And look, I can put it right under there. And then I could just lighten it down a little bit. It doesn't even have to be perfect. Just like that. And then I can go to erase really quick. Boom. See that? And now I have another side part to that leg. A little bit of reflective light. That looks somewhat... There's The eye will pick up little patterns. I have a little bit of a pattern here that's being duplicated there. And it'll feel realistic realistic enough for that to probably work, right? You like that? Okay, and then um, if you like that, layer it and commit to it is what I was trying to say, but I'm trying to think and draw and do this at the same time. Really quick here, I want to duplicate this layer because again, I want to show you that option. So you see this little thing that I created here? What happens if I come over here and I do this? What happens if I throw it up here? Okay, now I want to get this thing to pop. So I'm going to go to levels. I'm going to add more white to it right now. There, you see what I have? It's control H, let's hide the ants. See that? A little bit of white. What if I come over here and drop it sort of in the front like that? Now here's the best part. It's what I love about the transform tool. See that little bit of highlight I have there? If I transform it, if I turn it up like this, if I bring it right down in the front here, and squash it so it looks like I couldn't have painted something that small. I can get that to fit like right in there almost. Make it look like it's some type of computer chip or something. That's not really working for what I want. But look, I could take that and I could bring it maybe back up in here. We'll get to doing damage and metal and other stuff a little bit later. 
Right now I'm still comping out my guy. I'm getting a little bit caught up on details, but this is how I like to work to flush out little little bits and pieces of uh, my of uh, what I call a silhouette build here. So look, I'm gonna just sort of see if I can't take this guy. I wanna see what happens if I stretch him and bring him in somewhere to fit. Mm, let's find a happy place for him. That's cool, right back there. Oh, I like that a lot. See that, it's like metal plating with highlights on it. So now I'm gonna erase the, some of the leftovers that I have. Let me double check it. There it is. Erase that right in there. Erase a little bit of that to get that to blend in. And I have that cool little metal plate look. See how it looks like? There's little pieces of sheet metal on top of something black on there. Really cool. But what I'm going to do first, I'm going to come back and paint this little end piece to get that to blend in there. Let me show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to touch this layer. I'm just going to call it H because there's some type of highlight. I'm going to take this other layer that I have here. I'm going to blend that. And there, commit to that. So all together right now, these other layers are, that was, let me delete these layers. So I don't want you to think I have a ton of layers. That's a different silhouette we're going to work on next. Um, so right now, that's no layer that's important to me. I just want to show this to you guys because it's important to commit. What's this layer here? Yeah, that was that other one I duplicated there. I'm going to converge those there. Now I'm pretty much just that. I have two layers I'm working from. Okay, so I'm going to come back under this layer. I want to paint in and blend some of this coming in here. Right now, that doesn't blend. So how do you paint and do a blend? Well, this is how you do it. You're going to come over here. You grab that value. You grab your brush, and you just pretty much slightly stroke it across and start to paint in some of that value until you hit an area where you want it to stop. Now, how if I wanted to hit an area where I wanted it to stop, I could do that with the lasso. I can go straight across, dip it down, come over here, go up like that. There. Okay. Oops. Let's try that again. I had something else selected there. My bad. So watch. I'm going to select here. Bring that down to about here. Come across. Dip it down. Go to there. Come back over there. And I'm going to select all that little area right there, right? Now I'm going to come in with my brush. You see this? I'm going to start grabbing these colors and I'm going to be bringing them across, just basically duplicating them. I'm going to be adjusting my brush size is going to be key for me to get that to mimic right there, right? Now that was just a little line I put in there. I can fix that in a minute. I can add another line. You don't have to paint it in perfectly right now. There we go, that's going pretty good. I like that. Now I'm going to deselect, and then I'm going to get some of this darker value to start coming up under here and uh, try to get this to blend in here. I'm actually going to start with the gray, move the gray across really lightly in here. Now I like the idea, I want this to cut across. I don't want it to feel like just a fin. So what I'm going to do is just come in here with my brush right now, take this little highlight that's here, I'm going to sort of jet it across like this, and then bring it down like so. And then what I'll do is maybe see if I can wrap it back around somehow. Sometimes I'll change my mind. That's all right. It's normal, right? You can do that. There's no penalties. We're in a rough stage here. If you can knock one of these out in an hour, you're in a good place. And it just takes a little bit of practice, a couple steps to get in there. And I'm not relying on any photos right now. I'm just, just paint, have fun. Subtract a little bit out of there. Oops. And 
Now I'm just going to paint a little bit more and see where I end up in here. Little highlight on there. So, um, whenever I have, look, if I'm going to have that pop forward right here, I want to have this area back in here drop behind. So I'm going to come back in here now and take a darker value and push that back. I want to make it sort of fade in. So it makes that little arm sort of pop out. And i got to be careful. I don't want to get this too... Um, this is starting to get much brighter than my front. And that's going to be my key area here. So I could... You know, that's easy adjustment. I could just put a, a value over that. I can adjust it. I can just take black right now. Take like a 20% grade and I can knock this down really quick. That's fine. So just don't don't zoom in and get get too caught up on what you're working on. So this is it. Keep working from here. Keep flushing out your shapes and see what you end up with. Sky's the limit, all right? Let's find a pass can go up to about 50% here and just put some. Man, I'm not really liking that, but that's okay. I'll blend that in with something else right now. Um, what, what I like about this technique that I think is important is it's like drawing in your sketchbook, you know. You don't always have a perfect idea, but if you get something that you don't like, you can just smear back into it and develop something else out of it. You have to think in that, that positive sense. You're not always going to get something that's spot on to what you want, right?
come on, shop. Okay, so I'm gonna I'll stop right there so I don't make this too long, and then I can upload that, and then we'll come back onto that. But you see where I'm at now? I, I'm about 30 minutes into this demo, and um, I have enough shape taking place now where it's wrapping um, because of the use of the light, light coming left to right. Um, I'm really starting to identify the planes, the facade changes. Uh, think of everything back in the box and cubes and spheres and adjust that as you start to render it. Now from here, I could just keep developing it. And again, if you, you, you do this, I'm sort of noodling because I haven't got to do this for a while and it's a lot of fun. But if you jump into this, you can develop some really, really quick methods for working using your layer options. And a lot of it is thinking about where your, your highlight's gonna be, where sort of your mid shadows, where's your reflective light. And then you could just put those in, duplicate parts, mesh stuff together, and boom, you can be done really quickly. Um, nothing, it's actually pretty cool if you wanted to time yourself, go home and give yourself, let's say, an hour just to do like the front headpiece. Boom. Finish it in an hour and then do another version of that and give yourself 40 minutes. Then do a third version and give yourself 20 minutes. And trust me, at 20 minutes you'll be working as fast as you were when you started in an hour. That's a great way to learn the stuff and to start applying in there. Okay, so right now, just note to you guys, to self, right, no photo textures at all because I have too many students are too dependent on photo textures it's just me painting with value blending in there taking things I've already painted and expanding on top of that and blending it together and seeing what I come up with okay all right so let me end this then we'll come back into this on the next demo and I'll start putting more detail in there and we'll solidifying areas and then we'll start talking a little bit more maybe about surface structure reflective light um, some other little details, maybe little bullet holes, whatever we want to put in there, numbering, all kinds of good stuff like that, all right? And then what we can do is we can take that and then we can start to put that into an environment and start talking about what we, what we might have if we created something in atmospheric perspective. All right, I'll be right back.